Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. This is the last show of 2022. I'm joined by the original Paul Bearer, Rich Stambolian. What's up, man? How are you? Um, I feel like garbage. You you know what? Uh I you're you're never sick like this, but when you are, you really you get hit hard. And I turn into a giant effing baby. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, man. I do too. Uh man, last show of the year, dude. It was a it was a fun year. It was a good year. It was a wild year in professional wrestling. It was a wild year for our podcast, you know, thanks yeah. to all the new viewers and all the supporters and all the uh, the weekly watchers. Yeah, I mean, Canada. you know what's funny, dude? Yeah. Uh, someone came in, he's like, he's like, yeah, you guys like, you guys have like the group best presence and you guys look great, but the live viewers are, are not like crazy. I'm like, yeah, because we do the show at 10 fucking o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know it, it's more like this is like the cool like this is like the hangout like whoever comes mm -hmm. here knows the deal uh but our download numbers were up like 300 percent. our viewership numbers are like it's unbelievable this ride that we've been on um it, it, I'm, I'm so humbled by the whole thing really same here and today's our last episode guys yeah forever see you guys never <laughs> all right we're done we're after done. this sayonara uh no it's awesome you know like it's really cool i also i have this fantasy where like since we do it so early and people might be getting ready for work everybody is dressed in a suit <laughs> and they're just uh sipping their black coffee while we're on like some kind of monitor like <laughs> check these guys out hun yeah you know uh <laughs> I, I i don't think that's the case no <laughs> <laughs> no no, definitely not. <laughs> Guys, the show's cool, all though. about all about professional wrestling. We like to have fun here. We like to just I don't know. How how would you describe the show? The show has evolved so many different ways. Like there was a time we were really serious and then we weren't, and then we go back and forth. I think it's whatever we're in the vibe of doing. We like to change it up a little bit. I you know, I was thinking about that the other day, and as I love doing the show, but I also think like because there's so many podcasts out there, and I do think a lot of uh, folks and this is going to sound very egotistical i've tried to ape our style a little bit but in 2023 i'd like to go a little more absurdist but okay. serious at the same yeah. time you know like still analytical of the good takes no dead air sharp but a little more nutty i could do that very easily i know you could do that i could turn the nutty <laughs> up very easily uh but it, it was a fun year, man. It was a, it was a crazy year for professional wrestling. We have a lot of content mm -hmm. coming in the next few days. I'm not sure when we're going to be able to record these. Uh, we were going to do it yesterday, but Rich was feeling extremely basura. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to do one today, and we're going to do a couple tomorrow. We'll get it out there. No pressure. It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll, It'll happen. happen. Uh, also, I'll be on with Wrestling Observer Live with our worst of show, I'm going to be joined by Matt Ryan on Sunday for the worst of 2022, which there was a ton of worst ofs in 2022, which we'll talk about. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have our prediction show for this show. We have uh, our we have a bunch of stuff coming. So I hope you're you're ready for the beginning of the year because we have a ton of stuff. And then Wrestle Kingdom and everything else. And we're now we're in WrestleMania season. So oh, it's, good Lord. It's going to keep rolling and rolling and rolling. All right, let's get wait. started. I can't wait either. Let's get started here. Where do you want to go? Uh, before that, uh, uh, our weekly dollar ninety nine from Bachelor three thousand. Good yeah. morning, my ghoulies. Oh, hello, my ghoulie. I like that that wintry uh, schmutz that's on his uh, thing there. What do you do? He put a little uh, little it's filter got on a little couple oh, of yeah, snowflakes on wintry. the uh, thing. It is wintry. I can't Very listen, guys. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off by saying I can't really think too well and talk too well right now, but we're gonna get through it. Uh, let's jump into that WWE news. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, WWE was planning for Tyson Fury to make an appearance at the 2023 Royal Rumble, which was supposed to lead to a match at WrestleMania 39, but it looks like these hopes are quote unquote slim and complicated, which should be the gimmick of a new wrestler, and he is banned <laughs> from entering the U.S. Due to Jesus, due to links with alleged Irish mob boss Daniel Kinahan, as per the U.S. Sun, wild. Yeah, this is uh, the U.K. Sun or the U.S. Sun. I think it means the it US. says U.S. It's probably U.K. But probably listen, U.K. because no MG's doing it. Listen, he's the boob that never loses. Can I, can I tell you something? I, I want to go into this, but I want to tell you, like I'm, I, I later in my years, I found out that I'm a pretty decent writer. Like yeah. I could put together. A really good email. I could articulate how I think. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's been the, it, you know, the last couple of years I correspond with so many people, I realize how, how dumb, dumb people are. Yes. However, MG Geeks typing has made me into Ernest Hemingway with oh my, my ability to write. You, you, I, you definitely feel like you're Tennessee Williams compared to what MG's doing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. No offense to MG. No, no. no. Listen, MG, you do a great job, but sometimes those glaring errors are, I think, <laughs> hysterical. And what's even more hysterical is Andrew's reaction to them. Yeah, he wrote. He wrote. Uh, he wrote. Joe dominates. WWE signs Dragon Lee and P for CM Punk. P P on CM Punk. That's what P he wrote. on CM yeah. Punk. I'm like, dude, that's not the title here. It's plea. Uh, yeah. So Tyson Fury, you know, he doesn't really have a lot of fights in the U.S. So no. And, and it kind of sucks if you're in like the pay per view business, if you're in the bar business, and you want to have these fights on. Uh, it, it yeah. kind of sucks for you because it's pointless. It's on at like two in the afternoon. I, I, I don't know if this is going to clear it up by WrestleMania 39. I know they, they, they love working with him. He's a big name. But mm -hmm. to be honest, his draw power in the U.S. is not anywhere what it was a couple of years ago because no. of the lack of, lack of you know access to him here. So I don't know how much of a big deal this is going to be. Uh, but we'll see where this goes, if they'll be able to get him for WrestleMania because this is going to be a very star-studded WrestleMania by, yeah. by every point... That I'm seeing, they want to make this very celebrity heavy. Whether you're a celebrity from the sports world or or media or whatever, uh, they're very much pushing this to be a gigantic. You know, it's in LA, so you got to you got to glitter it up. So very interesting stuff here. Uh, pitch black match advertised for Royal Rumble. This is a tie with Mountain <laughs> Dew, which makes me disgusted automatically. Gross. Do you know I hate soda? Do you really? I hate soda. Spy so you know, really. If, yeah, if I'm really of the, Go if I'm really like messed up, like if I'm like loaded and I get Chinese food, I'll get a Coca Cola. That's it. That's the most. I'll have one Coca Cola every like twenty four months. I like a nice cold Diet Coke or a nice cold Diet Dr Pepper. Um, I don't have much against sodas, but I don't like. There's certain sodas I don't like, and Mountain Dew is on that list. Mountain Dew's on that list. I never, but I never did the Dew. I never got into Mountain Dew. It was never a thing. Great marketing. But what the hell is a Amazing pitch black marketing. match? I guess it's a Bray Wyatt match. I guess so. I also, as soon as I hear pitch black, I just think of the Vin Diesel movie. <laughs> is that where you, you know, come he's, automatically? He's, he's got the goggles and like the black tank top. And he's like an alien. You remember that movie? No. Wasn't that Riddick? Chronicles yeah, of Riddick? But Right, but he he his the first appearance of Riddick was Pitch Black, so I always okay. call him Pitch Black in my head because of the stupid goggles and the tank top. Yeah, I don't know. I he, uh, they announced the okay. match before the <laughs> participants, so they're like, okay, yeah. well we're gonna have this match. We don't know who it is yet. All right, cool, whatever. I imagine I imagine it tastes either like licorice or like grape. Do you want to drink a black drink? I mean, I drink coffee every morning. <laughs> you do, but like a soda? Like, uh, I guess they're all black. I mean, every soda is like, like black. black, you know? But I feel like the map, for some reason, I just feel like it's like, like real, like dark. Like, like you're looking into like a black hole. I guess that's what it like, is. I don't know what it looks like. Let's see. Mountain Dew pitch black. Let's find out. Like a lot of chemicals, you know? Like a I'm, ton like, of chemicals. Like a lot of dyes that are banned in Europe are used in this. Look at how black your hair is right now. Imagine it's purple. That as a, as a, imagine that as a soft drink. <laughs> uh the pitch black looks purple to me yeah it's 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 that it's that dark that it's a different color crazy it's I I, if so. you if you don't drink anything that changes color don't you don't drink don't drink uh the, the uh i don't know the do the do yeah uh moving on Apparently, AEW, AEW's Dax Harwood makes a plea for CM Punk and the Elite to find a way to make it work. Uh, Harwood has his own podcast now. He said he isn't sure if Punk will ever return to AEW. They're apparently buddies. Yeah. You yeah. They, they hit it off in AEW. But how do you not? You know, they're both big time wrestling fans. They're workers. Mm -hmm. You know, they this is very interesting to me. So I, I got, you know, I made we did like a like a quick, bold prediction for 2023 mm -hmm. and i'm like i predict that they're gonna make it work with cm punk but okay. it was more like why and people are like why would they want to make it work with cm punk because why wouldn't they want to make it work with cm punk He's, what other big name can you get 
He's the biggest exactly. name that you could possibly get in your company. You saw that he was a needle mover for sure. Forget about the personality clash, right? Forget about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you can make business happen, you want to make business happen. Well, it's also the old adage in wrestling, controversy equals cash, right? Yeah. So why not? They could tour, those, if they get along, they could tour those matches around for six months at, easily. I, I, Dude, like I'm... I don't know why it would be a bad thing if they could finally put this together and be like, okay, you know what? We were all out of control here. We were all yeah. a-holes. Like, this was, this is not how it should have been. We should have been more professional about this. We could talk this out. We could figure it out. You know, like, it, it's, it's a television show. I just imagine that whole thing to be like the scene in the first Anchorman where all the news teams fight each other. <laughs> That's that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, uh, but you know what's funny? Like I, I, you know, like I had dinner with someone from WWE, and they're like, you know, this is a great example of of controlling what's happening on your television show rather than letting the wrestlers do it all on their own. You know, yeah. and you kind of look at it, you're like, I kind of understand your point here. Like, I like the creative liberty that that these guys have in AEW that the promos aren't as one dimensional, but. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it leads to stuff like this. But th th to be honest, this is all this. None of this should have happened. This is so absurd that any of this happened. They all mm -hmm. have the same goal, and that's to make AEW the best that it could be. And, right. you know, you, you're, you're the top guy in this company. Like CM Punk was the top guy in the company. We have seen a ratings decline since he's been off TV. We've seen the 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 optic shift over since he left oh, this, yeah. this turned off so many people mm -hmm. what what better way to rehab this by figuring out a way to do business and make this into the biggest thing in the world you know cm punk versus kenny omega for a title now really becomes a valuable asset cm punk oh, it. and cm punk and and an ftr versus the bucks and kenny becomes a huge asset in your pocket here oh forget not it. saying that it's gonna happen i don't you know like who knows if Tony wants to make it happen? I don't know that. Mm -hmm. But Tony's a... Listen, this this poor guy gets so much bullshit on the internet. He does. And and it's 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 really... Like, I think a lot of these guys do. It's not just Tony. It's everybody, right? But it's so, so unfair because none of these people know them. They don't know their thought process. They don't know what goes in between. You know, it's just, it's just half-truths that everybody knows. And you kind of put this narrative together that it's, you know, this company's falling apart. It's not the case. Um, it's growing pains for sure, but I would think it should be a priority to make this work in some possible way. If it's impossible to work, if they've tried it, then yeah, you tried. But if you don't try to make it work, then you failed. Well, there's also no modicum of self-control on the internet, you know? So folks aren't really looking out for Tony Khan's best entrance. They kind of want to just crap on the dude because he's in charge, you know? Yeah, I, listen... It, it, People have really wacky points of view, and majority of these points of view are not even theirs. It's something that oh, they yeah, hear yeah, yeah. That, that tickles them a little, and then they regurgitate the whole thing. Uh, listen, I never claim I know everything. I don't know the full story here, but I know enough of it to, to kind of piece together what exactly happened here. If they can know, make, Why wouldn't you make this work? You know, Why it, wouldn't you want to make this work? Why would you want to throw away... The biggest asset in the company, and, and this goes for the Bucks and Kenny and everybody else. And you know, Jericho. The story came out today uh, that Jericho and other other top guys they said CM Punk will never work in this company again. Wow. You know what? I'm sure somebody said that. I'm sure at the heat of the mm -hmm. moment that was the response because you effed up. You know, a year's worth of momentum that you had built from yeah. from one stupid incident from all parties. So, well, go ahead, Rich. No, no, no. Go ahead. Finish your thought because uh, there's, there's a couple more things we could talk about. But you know, my point is, I, I think I think before people like he should never be in that company. He should never go to WWE. I don't think WWE wants him. Uh, I, there's there's still there's a couple of things that happen that aren't too public that WWE really doesn't really want him. But at the end of the day, you know what? You know what's a great you know, F you to w AEW to get him. So I think he's going to be a hot commodity. I don't, you know, I, I, my opinion is if they can make it work, they should. 
for both companies. Yeah, but uh, ultimately, again, it's up to the guy, right? It's up um, to him. He's yeah. an, he's an, it's a very fascinating situation because, you know, as much as folks think they know the inner workings of these things, they really don't, you know, and this is a perfect example of it, right? Where yeah. even now, and this happened how long ago? Folks Six are coming months, up with these, yeah, conspiracy theories and like, what well, is it a work? Is it not a work? I think, listen, it would it be quote unquote best for business if the guy comes back and they can hash it out? Absolutely. You know, you can help make the company bigger and better. But you, you know and, what though, Rich? You as yeah. a fan, right? You as a, because mm -hmm. like in my circle, in my world like, that yeah. I interact with, like there's no bigger fan for wrestling than you. Okay. Sometimes more than me, you know, I, I think. Fair enough. Many times, more than me, you like stuff that I'm not. I, sometimes I, I'm just checked out, and that's that's honest. That's how it works. Mm. But you, as a fan, don't you want to see them make up and have CM Punk somewhere? Have them on TV somewhere? I think more as a person, I want to see them make up. I think if you're a millionaire and you're you got a boo boo face that other millionaires are doing weird shit, get over it. You know what I mean? That's my yeah. stance. For me personally, as a fan, like I not that I lost respect for CM Punk, but like. I, like whatever I had that was like backing the guy like fizzled tremendously. Sure. Yeah. No, you know? listen, I'm not I'm not even looking at it as a personal thing. Like I'm taking all the personality right. issues out of it. I'm looking at it as a business. Um, OK. You know, like that's how I'm looking at this, because if you had the personality issues. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be very difficult. I don't think uh, I don't think most people. Uh, you know what it is? People felt betrayed by this. Fans, a lot of fans. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've heard it for months, right? And and mm -hmm. I don't, I never put in any of my personal thoughts on the character. Like, right, right. I have no, I don't know CM Punk. I'll never tell you, like, an opinion that I have of him because I don't know him. Mm. I know enough right, people that know him and they like him. And I know enough people that know him and they don't like him. I can't base an opinion right. on this guy. But if if I'm in business... I want to work with the best people that I possibly can to make that business grow, regardless of my personal yeah. belief. I have people that work for me that I cannot look at, <laughs> like MG Geek. I can't look at this man. I well, you've can't... also said that you don't want to look at him. I don't want to look at him. Dude, if you look at him too long, you turn into stone. <laughs> he has like a Medusa, Medusa power. No, but you know what I mean? Like in my, in my everyday Medusa. job, there are people yeah. that I can't – I get I just – the vitriol that I have for yeah. these people, yeah, because for sure. uh, because they're they're crappy. However, they are fantastic at what they do, and mm -hmm. they're great for the business. And you work with them. Now, whether or not that's what happens here, I don't know. I hope it does. I hope that Tony could, you know, uh, Tony and everybody in that company could sit down and be like, "Okay, guys, this is a detrimental freaking year." Yes, we got a TV um, deal that. You know, not that it's not in their favor, but it's not in their favor as much as it would have been if Warner did emerge with Discovery. There's a lot of things at play here. And I also think, like, you you don't have to... Tony Khan doing AEW is not his full, full-time thing. You know, he's not concentrating on it full-time because he's got a lot of stuff to worry about with the other ventures, right? Well, no, no, no. Like, he, he's full-time concentrating on it. I'll tell you. But you still have you have the Jaguars and you yeah. have the the football club, right? Yeah. Full the other the other thing is like unfortunately, and we've said this before, is the guy, and this is not his fault, but it's just the way the business is. He bought damaged goods, you know, in a lot of ways, right? And by damaged goods, I mean guys that worked their ass off on the indies, who went to WWE, and not that are injury prone, but they're banged up, you know. How many times is CM Punk out with an injury? Daniel Bryan, uh, Brian Danielson, um, Adam Cole. You know, like there's a long list of guys who sure. he acquired who immediately got hurt, you know? Yeah. And that can't be good for morale. That can't be good for any kind of vibes. But I think, you know, in a weird way, I think they're writing it. Like the stuff that they're doing on TV now is kind of how they started three years ago. Right. Like heavy yeah. concentration on guys like Jungle Boy and Hook, MJF. Right. As opposed to like the veterans or the new signees. My pompadour is really high today, by the way. The chat room is losing it. Look at this. It's wig number one. This is what I told you. This is the Tuesday wig. I, I, it's yeah. all whacked out. I normally wear this on Tuesdays. 
No, uh, I got a new hairspray, and it doesn't it doesn't drop my hair as much. It just pop, it just like really high. This thing is like up to here. I had to cut it out. Oh. I had to Photoshop the background on it. How long does it take for you to to strap that that wig on? <laughs> uh, sometimes it's really quick. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really quick. It uh, I, so it's like a flip, and then just a hairspray. Uh, okay. Other times, I have to redo it if the hairspray isn't up to par. Like it now, really you... depends on how I cup, how I cup the top. Like if I if I get the pump up and then I can pull it back, it's perfect. But mm -hmm. sometimes, like my hand slips and I got to redo it. So let me ask you: Do you believe in that old method of like not washing your hair? Like no, it's like wash your hair every other shower, or I, you I wash my hair. I wash my hair. Uh, I shampoo my hair once a day, twice a day. No, <laughs> twice a day. No, twice a day. Yeah. Twice a day. I wash yeah, my yeah. hair. Twice a day. My hair is very fine. I got very soft hair. Very straight. You do. You... Very straight hair. Except for when I had like the little man bun, my hair got curly because I was putting in a little bun. Yeah. It was nice. It was a nice little uh, little flavor I got in my hair. I want you to like really grow your hair long. It was down here. 2023, I want your hair down to your nippies. I can't. I can't because the, the company I work with, the owner hates long hair. Really? Yeah. He's, oh, he constantly tells me to shave my sideburns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see if anybody got that joke here. Let's see. But listen, for the CM Punk stuff, I I, yeah. I I would hope that they can make it work. Dax also said on his podcast, which I have to listen to. I haven't listened to this podcast, but I'm hearing it's fantastic. Mm. He wants a locker room that the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, and Punk are all part of. This guy, listen, man, he's a professional. He's being diplomatic. He want, yeah. He made a plea to all four men involved to please find a way to make this work better and it's better for future business absolutely 100 percent. yeah so tony was on the grap city podcast our buddy will washington he's one of those guys yeah. on that show fantastic show by the way it's really becoming a, a a weekly listen for me which i absolutely love they do a fantastic job i highly recommend you guys listen to them they're on fightful uh great cr crew over there great group of guys and they they like great perspective just overall fantastic show he said that losing Cody Rhodes was a major challenge for the company. Khan said on the Paige Van Zandt availability, she makes a lot of money and commands big dollar. I know a little about that, how much she charges. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. big bucks. Uh, but they're also interested in working with her. She's, she's actually a tremendous professional. I had a few conversations with her team about some other projects that I work on. And uh, great, great group, you know, great team to work with over there. Mm -hmm. uh, they would love to have her back. She has a great attitude and did a great match. I think she was fantastic in AEW. I thought she did Absolutely. great stuff. Uh, with the right fight and the right opportunity, yes, I would love to make it work. So she also broke her foot recently. I think she was filming something for her OnlyFans, and she fell and broke her foot in three <laughs> places. It. Yeah, yeah. And she's out of her next fight uh, that she had coming up in February. So that that's terrible. Uh, let's... How weird is that? How weird is that? Like you, you, you don't get injured training or in the ring. I know. She, I think something. she like jumped off her balcony or something. She was doing something and and she broke her foot. So uh... that's how we get hurt. All our injuries is <laughs> is, is just doing stuff for our OnlyFans. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're just doing jackass stunts for our OnlyFans, and that's what happens. <laughs> so it's perfect. He also said he wouldn't rule out running a Ring of Honor show during WrestleMania weekend. He also said Honor Club had the most subscriptions it has ever had. Awesome. Um, I'm hoping to get a good TV deal for Ring of Honor. I'm hoping that they they kind of something happens with this uh, contract negotiation where they get on TV in some p possible mm -hmm. positioning. Because I don't know how well this is going to work on the Honor Club. I also have a couple options here. I want to talk to you about this after we're done with the news about what AEW could do with their TV because I'm going to present the question for the chat room and let's see if they think it's a good idea. Do you think... And I'm saying this with a little little smirk here. Do you think AEW would benefit with a third hour of Dynamite? Okay, I'm going to leave that in the chat room because we'll come back to it when we go into it. I'm just going to put that out there. Would they benefit with a third hour or a second hour of Rampage? Just mm -hmm. another hour of TV. Actually, let's say Dynamite. Let's go with Dynamite. Would they benefit with a third hour of Dynamite? Let's, I'm going to let that marinate for a little bit. Let it sit there, guys. When you have your answers, just just post them. Yes. yes. Uh, I, do you want to go into that real quick or no? Or want to leave it for later? I'll leave it for later. We'll leave it for later. All right. Uh, what else do we have here? 
Former UFC fighter Stefan Bonner passes away at 45. Uh, he had appeared in pro wrestling. A lot of people attribute the rise of UFC because he was in uh, the rise of UFC to him. He was one of those key participants in the early days of UFC with uh, when they got on Spike. He was on the first Ultimate Fighter. And he had an unbelievable fight with Forrest Griffin that kind of solidified the uh, that 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 became one of the most important fights in UFC history. It really solidified UFC mm -hmm. as a top combat sport. It brought combat sports back to the United States. So he was an instrumental part. Forty five years old, the American psycho Stefan Bonner. He had also done a number of you know dozens of pro wrestling matches. He appeared at indie matches. He was in House of Glory, uh, IWS in two thousand seventeen. He was on Impact in 2019 when he wrestled Moose. Uh, sad story. You know, I, I know that he had some health issues and uh, passed away. 45 years old. Young man. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. 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 Dominic Mysterio. I love this stuff, man. Same here. You know, Same didn't here. we say this? Like, when they did the Thanksgiving thing, right before Thanksgiving, we were talking about this. I'm like, you know what would be great if he brought, like, his goth girlfriend to Thanksgiving? Exactly. And, like... The grandparents are like weirded out that like he's like all into this goth phase and like they're just entertaining mm -hmm. it. Uh, they actually they did fantastic stuff on Thanksgiving and now uh, they did it again for Christmas where Rhea and Dominic crashed the, the Christmas at the grandfather's house. <laughs> the grandpa was the best part, dude. This Wasn't has been he the nothing best part? Great. Yes. This has he been gave, nothing but fantastic. So he opens the door and he gives Rhea a big hug and gives Dominic mm -hmm. a hug and then like he was welcoming them. Uh, so, so they arrested him. <laughs> <laughs> I do like where this is going. So Abuelo, Abuelo yeah. was was great. I mean, so good. He and then so they arrest him. They put him in the car, and he's like, he's like, I I, I won't survive in jail. I can't I can't do jail. I can't be in jail. Fantastic. Uh, just so well done. It's very good. Um, but also like Ray's on SmackDown, and this whole thing has pretty much just been on like WWE social media. Yeah, but this is probably is gonna great. lead to their WrestleMania match. You know, this will lead to WrestleMania. This is their big moment. Yeah. This is something they wanted to do last year that they they kind of I was a year off <laughs> with my report here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was one year off. But I know they wanted to do this last year and they kind of held off on it, and I think this is even better. They've done a much better job at you know, it wasn't just a turn. They, they, this is a story where Dominic has been corrupted by this this gothic Jezebel of Rhea Ripley. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic stuff. Uh, what else do we got here? You want me to go into AAA uh, were, or you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. There was a, you, a How do you show. feel? Let me ask you. How do you feel right now? One to ten. I feel like garbage. I feel okay. like one to ten. I f I'm like a two, but like, okay. you know, I'm, I'm trooping I'm it out. I'm, right, I'm okay. muting my mic every time I cough. Okay. Um. Sammy Guevara and Tay Mello were stripped of the AAA mixed tag titles before their defense on the show. And then Tay wrestled on Dynamite. Um, Dragon Lee and... Uh, is this spelled right? Darlistico. 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 I don't know Defeated if he spelled if it right. That is spelled correct. Oh, thank yeah. you. Mm -hmm. Dude, oh, there's, there's, no, there's no <laughs> vowels in the way he spelled it. It's just consonants and, and like tildes. Rich is gone. That that broke Rich right now. So wait till Rich comes back. Uh, Dragon Lee and Dralistic, Dralistico defeated FTR to win the AAA Tag Team Championships. As the losing streak continues. After the match, Dragon Lee announced he was headed to WWE. This is fascinating stuff here. Uh, you back, Rich? No, he's not. He's gone. Goodbye, Rich. Oh, oh, yeah. There he is. Hello. <laughs> there you go. Hold on. Go anywhere. Yeah, there you are. No, no, no you were frozen. You froze. froze yeah. for like two seconds, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, after the match, he announced that he was headed to WWE. He starts sometime in January with NXT per Lucha Blog. WWE's NXT account actually tweeted out the announcement. Also, WWE had cameras there to document everything. Does this mean AAA and WWE arrange, arrangement has been worked? Um, I think AAA is up for working with everybody. If they could work yeah. with WWE, they would freaking love it. Uh, Drag so a little on this Dragon Lee situation. Dragon Lee was, you know, in 2016, WWE very much wanted him. We had spoken yes. about it on the show. Uh, he was one of those top guys. This is also going to the report that we put out 
uh, about a month ago that, actually more than that, that NXT was going to revamp in the new year. And the idea that it's just developmental is out the window. They will be signing independent talent. They will be signing talent from Ring of Honor or, or whatever you want to call it, right? If they leave Ring of Honor, if they leave AEW. Uh, they want mm -hmm. NXT to kind of be competitive again. And, you know, not only just heighten their internal talent, but also create talent that's already well established that they could, you know, create on the main roster and, and, and move up there and have a good run. This is Triple H's vision with this company. It's a hybrid for NXT. You're going to have some unbelievable workers there, like a Dragon Lee. And then you're also going to have an in-house talent that you've created, like Braun, Braun Breaker. Yeah. So this is the first sign, right? This is what we were talking about. Dragon Lee is there. I know that the money offer is not a, you know, it's a high offer. It, it's, a, it's a higher than NXT standard offer. It's not a main roster offer thing but apparently the report is that by 2024 he'll be on the main roster uh let's see let's see how they do this because remember nxc is going to be touring again this year you can't yeah, have no problem no knock a toxic attraction but it cannot be just toxic attraction and cora jade and braun breaker you need some you know talent that you people kind of recognize and they'll they're gonna they're gonna flock to now how, how recognizable is dragon lee in 2022 how much of a hot commodity is he? Because he hasn't really been on TV. He hasn't, uh, you know, the pandemic kind of slowed things down. But this is not the same Dragon Lee of five years ago, right? Five years ago, he was a, hot, a really hot commodity. Now, uh, there was a little bit of a bid between AEW and WWE. But I think he was better bet is WWE right now for him. Yeah, I have no problem with the guy signing with WWE. Uh, good for him. Yeah, I think I think it's a good good uh, move for uh, WWE and for him to go there. It's also, this is kind of like you know, like Triple H's back to basics approach. You know, like sign these guys if these guys are great, sign them. You yeah. know, as opposed to like the mandate that was passed down a few years ago of like <clears throat> no more indie darlings. Well, listen, dude, you have an option, right? You have an option, they, and they've wanted another yeah. Rey Mysterio. They've wanted this for God knows how long. And had they, had they been able to do it? No. They've Mystico come, was going to be the guy, remember? They've come close-ish every so often. Who was the but closest they, that they came? Well, Kalisto. I mean, but nowhere near. No, I mean, no. again, Kalisto was another attempt. I think it's, you know, honestly, like from, from, like a different perspective or like a fan's perspective it seems like they hire these guys and then they go great now go out there and be as great as Rey Mysterio but this is what you're gonna have to do you know I think also a big thing when WWE acquired Rey like well like 20 years ago 2000 uh 20 uh, 2003 he was doing the high flyer stuff that nobody does right yeah and, now, and you know what's amazing? And the argument for that Ray was, oh, yeah, that Ray is not the same Ray as WCW. And he was doing some unbelievable stuff in WWE. Right. But now you got these guys who are like, everybody works like a Lucha guy for the yeah. most part. You know what I mean? Like, everybody's a high flyer. Like, all your main event guys could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the same moveset. You know, and even yeah. Ray now isn't really doing much. Like, he's protecting himself, obviously. But... I think that's the tough thing. Like when you have a roster of like guys like Grand Metallic or uh, Lince Dorado or Kalisto or um, Mystico, you know, it, they're kind of pigeonholed into like that weird like lucha role. You know, they, you know? They, they, they've been, I mean, the story for the last 20 years is we need to create a top Latin star in this company. That is the story. Every, I mean, they, they know the importance of this. And they, they just did. You know what? Del Rio. Del Rio was Del Rio. probably. Out of Ray Mysterio, right? For, like Ray was mm -hmm. a, a a anomaly for them. They didn't create Ray. Ray was just so organically over. Yeah. Uh, and and you know what? And honestly, his size got him over because kids loved him. Yeah. He was such a fan favorite for kids because he's fun. Alberta Del Rio was the closest attempt that they had. I at, at creating a a top tier Latin star, and that fell apart. Uh. Andrade is another great example of trying to create a top top level Latin star. You know, that didn't really pan out the way they wanted to. And then they've tried to mask guy over and over. Kalisto, Sin Cara, yeah. the other Sin Cara, they've, they've attempted this. 
multiple times. It just didn't cl connect. Let's see if Dragon Lee could do it. I mean, I'm hoping Dragon League could do it. That would be awesome. And plus, like, look at the other side of the pond there on AEW. You know, you have got you have Andrade, Roosh, and El Bandito. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Well, it, it, yeah, uh, let's see what let's see what. Uh, I don't know do, do, who's who's the who's the top Latin star in AEW. Who's like the biggest Latin star in the company? It's got to be Andrade, right? Is it's it got to be Andrade or? Uh, no, you know what? Uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. I think Phoenix is had like for what happened to Pentagon. I feel like Pentagon's star has diminished a little bit because um, he was such like an amazing singles performer, and now he's kind of like he's in that tag team with his brother. Pentagon and Phoenix probably, probably yeah. Pentagon maybe Pen neck Pentagon and neck, and you know yeah. yeah but definitely. you also have again you have Andrade, you have Roosh, you have Bandito. And I feel like I'm missing a few names there. Too. I, I think they're. I would like to see them do more with Bandito and Roosh. Uh, yeah. it, it's it's amazing how they're not a top presence, but it just shows you how how stacked that roster is, and it kind of goes into that conversation we're going to have in a little bit about possibly another yeah. hour of AEW. So we'll see. A little housekeeping here, boys and girls. Submit your predictions for our prediction show by using the has hashtag MattMenPredictions2023. That's a l very long. Can we change that? <laughs> Can we just do MattMen2023? Let's just do that. MattMen2023 yeah. is, the is the hashtag to use on Twitter yeah. uh, when we record this week our predictions. If you haven't already, please participate in the third annual MattMen Award. Ballot link is pinned here. On our YouTube chat, and it's also on Twitter. You could go there, submit it, and sometime next week we're going to be doing our award show as well. Let's go into Dynamite, boys and girls. I thought yes, it was a yes. very fun Dynamite. Love this show. Strong, strong show. Strong right out the gate with Brian. Low Danielson ratings. Defeating. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian Danson beating Ethan Page with Stokely Hathaway in a trucker hat. Uh, Page passed out to the Regal Stretch after the match. Um, MJF was in a skybox with Daddy Doom, indie wrestler who people thought was Shotzi Blackheart. A lot of people thought it was Shotzi. And I'm like, mm -hmm. no, definitely not Shotzi. Um, so he was interrupting throughout the match. Yeah, great opener. And you know what was really interesting about this whole show? Uh, like, everybody passed out in every match. <laughs> Everybody passed right? out. Yeah. Am I wrong about that? Yeah. Like they did they did the knockout ending for almost every match on the on the card. Did which, they really? Yeah. Huh. Like I didn't uh, even so, know I did, yeah, they did actually. So you have, you know, Renee Renee is backstage with the Dark Order and Hangman. Uh Hangman's set to return in two weeks. You know, he's he's going after John Moxley. Um then Joe interrupts another interview, takes out Wardlow with like a pipe. Like Nancy Kerrigan style, right? Yeah, he did a Nancy uh, Kerrigan on him. My and the match why, after, why? <laughs> oh jeez, Tanya Harding. He Tanya he Tanya Harding them. <laughs> so then the match after that, Mox and uh, Claudio beating Top Flight, they knocked both these dudes out. Right, like that's yeah. another another match with like a knockout ending. Yeah, like a pass out style ending. That was a great match. That was a good tag team match. I thought that was a fun match too. Uh, I wonder if they're going to go for the tag titles now, you know, with this tag team, John Moxley and uh, Claudio, because they've been teaming up a lot. Or maybe it's that the end of the year it. and they're just having them on TV doing something, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. But I wouldn't mind seeing them as like, like the tag team because they're like they they made Top Flight look like a million bucks, but also the new direction of the Blackpool Combat Club is these guys are like you don't want to mess with these dudes, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh. Then you had FTW champ Hook submitting Balaam Links, who passed out. Terrible, terrible to, name. To the uh, Brian Alvarez <laughs> said on the show with Vinny that this is the, the like a very typical NXT name. Balaam Lux. <laughs> <laughs> Can we also scripts? What a stupid name. Yeah. Just turn him into Max Moon. Just bring back Max Moon and make it into a retro gimmick. I hate that gimmick for him. Scripps terrible uh, uh so this was interesting yeah. right he he submitted him it was a squash stokely comes out with lee moriarty and big bill congrats to big bill by the way big cast engaged 
Yeah, good for him, man. He had like yeah. a nice uh, DDP's uh, DDP's New- daughter. Wow, nice New York engagement. I, you know what's funny? I, I, f- I forgot what it was. Where, who was I with yesterday? I was with somebody, and he, I, 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 I was on my phone and I was scrolling. Oh, you know what it was? It was uh, Didi's husband. I was with Ryan. Okay. And he's like, "Wait a minute, is that Bill? Like that played basketball here?" I'm like, "Yeah, that is." He goes, "Oh yeah, shit, I played basketball with him. This guy was a monster." That's hysterical. He was a monster. He's like, "What is he doing now?" I'm like, "He's a wrestler." He's like, "No way," because <laughs> he's a local guy, you know. Yeah. Or yeah. used to where, be. Where, where did he go? He went to Chaminade. <laughs> he went to Chaminade. He went to Malloy, I think. He went to Malloy. Yeah, yeah. Or, or was it <laughs> Holy Cross? Did he go to Cross or Malloy? No, he went to Malloy. Malloy. Okay, he was a Malloy boy. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ruh You Uh-oh. see what he did? He broke your video. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> keep keep talking. I, All I right. I'll, I'll go into it. So uh, so this was actually I, I liked how they did this. Post match, Stokely comes out. Lee comes out. A big Bill comes out. Jungle Boy Jack Perry makes the save. Took out Moriarty while Big Bill had a face-to-face with Hook. You could see the huge size difference here between the two. And he went to, I guess, suplex him. He couldn't do it because he was so big. And he went up for the choke slam. He grabbed him. Here comes Jungle Boy. Hits him with a two-by-four and clears the ring. Uh, You know, I'm glad that they're moving into doing something different with Hook. I think it's the time to kind of pull this, uh, pull the trigger on him and have him into more matches rather than the squash he can still do the squash matches but have him involved in a match teaming up with jungle boy i like this team i think this is good for uh for both of them to kind of have them in some sort of program together here we go the elite versus Dra- uh, dragon triangle jesus death triangle and a false count anywhere match this is match six of the best of seven series it's now tied three three while where the elite won it started backstage, the match, because it was a total brawl, this thing. Match starts backstage. Uh, Pack avoided the Meltzer driver, sent Matt into Nick, locked Matt into the Brutalizer. Meanwhile, at the same time, there you are. Meanwhile, at the there same you. time, Kenny hits a one-winged angel off the stage through a table and gets the three count before Phoenix, uh, gets the three count on Phoenix before Matt taps. So Matt actually tapped, but it was a little too late here. I thought they did. You know, how do you feel about this match? Because I saw it very differently, and it just shows you the style of wrestling that I like versus the style of wrestling that a lot of other people like. People claim that this was the best out of the the matches that they've had. The six matches that they've had, this was the best one. I didn't feel that way. Did you? I didn't feel that way either. I felt like this was the fastest one, and I think this needed to be the quick one. Uh, what I did love about the match was uh, Kenny going classic Street Fighter style with blue jeans with pads on the outside and uh, a sleeveless T-shirt. Yeah, I mean that isn't that isn't that the the typical uh, backstage brawl outfit? Uh, exactly. It, it was it was everything out of like early two thousands WWF, you know, uh, wrestling like backstage brawls, mm-hmm. uh, but. I, I don't know. I, I just felt that this wasn't the best one out of the six. It was really good. I very much liked it. I just felt that yes. the other one, there were, there were, there was a, I don't know. I, I don't like the backstage stuff. Just that's my, that's my bias here. Yeah. I think that next match is going to go, is going to be nuts. You know, I say that. I say I didn't like the backstage stuff, but you know what stupid match I enjoyed? Mm hmm. Do you remember uh, the the Money in the Bank when they did it at Stanford at yes. Titan Towers? Yes. I actually like that stupid match. Same here. That's the one where Ray got thrown off the building, right? They they murdered Ray. They threw him off the building. Yeah. And uh, who and won that one? Do you remember? I Otis. don't remember. Otis won that match. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, Bruce Pritchard being on the can was the best part because <laughs> I. I was told that Bruce from Connecticut, remember he called. He said he's on the toilet. Oh, that's before. right. Yeah. And he actually was on the toilet. Uh, let's see. Where are we? So, all right. So, uh, meanwhile, Omega hit the one-wing angel and they won. Okay. Acclaimed at a music video on Jeff Jarrett and Jay Lethal. They referenced Jarrett's entire career, including Global Force Wrestling and stealing Kurt's wife. <laughs> <laughs> very good very entertaining like they highly, brought up the gold yeah highly entertaining they brought up the gold that he was selling at one point <laughs> and also did um, you let me ask you did you have this on your bingo card that that jeff Jarrett would be feuding with the acclaimed 
no. in 2022? No, 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 no. no, nobody did. Do you think do you think Jeff Jarrett looked at the landscape of wrestling this year and was like, I gotta do my best to save the day? <laughs> and he's <laughs> just like And he put on his he put on his gear and he grabbed his guitar and just took off. Uh uh-huh. he's and been you know on what? everything. I'm, He's been on everything. I really enjoyed the video. I also like the little digs to to Jay Lethal as uh, Black Machismo. Yeah, that he, he only got over when he impersonated someone. Yeah, cool stuff. Uh, we got Anna Jay and Ty, Tay Mello defeating Ruby Soho and Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale is very over right now. Yes. And, and I hope they keep that momentum because she's very joyous to watch. You know? Yes. Like she's so happy and and it just I'm I'm into this. I wasn't into it early on, but now I'm start, it's starting mm-hmm. to click for me, and I like that she's getting some TV time. So they're doing a good job of kind of establishing some of these uh, the stars on the women's roster here. Yeah. TNT and ROH TV champion Samoa Joe defeated Wardlow to retain the TNT title. You know they did a good job here. Oh, for sure. I thought they told a very good story here. Wardlow sold his knee from the beginning. They teased uh, him not even coming out at one point. Mm-hmm. Warlow tried to get the power bomb but couldn't. Joe chop locked him, got a rear naked choke, and Wardlow passed out. Afterwards, another guy who passed out. <laughs> another guy to pass out. Everybody's passing out there. You yeah. know what? Where were they? Maybe the oxygen was low. Were they at high elevation? <laughs> yeah, where were they, MJ? They, you know how they should pass Denver. out though. They were. They were. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ding ding ding. <laughs> <laughs> that's why it wasn't sorry, booking you. it wasn't tony's booking they're high elevation they're in denver these guys didn't train properly they're just passing out high altitude man it messes with you that is it by the way that is the kayfabe reason why everybody was passed out someone needs to <sighs> make that in- <laughs> oh he's back <laughs> oh no he's it's happening i had to kill that gimmick man i didn't feel right after the velveteen dream stuff all right well i mean <laughs> you could, you could pay- 2023, the return. <laughs> I want John Moxley day. to pass out like that in a match. Do you think he'll ever do that? Oh, the Why ether. Not? Just Why banning not? himself. <laughs> that would be like his version of like balloon, balloon Okada. Balloon Okada. Yeah, sad balloon Okada. Um, so at the end, they made it seem like Joe was going to shake his hand in a, in a moment of respect. You know, this guy gave it his all. And instead, he blindsides him, beats the crap out of him. Goes under the ring, gets a pair of shears, and he snaps that ponytail off. Oh, man. So good. So Great good. moment. Big moment. Great you know moment. what? Great, great opportunity to reinvent himself. Probably he was like, dude, I'm cutting this shit off. I can't do this man butt yeah. anymore. And they're like, okay, let's cut it off on TV. Done. At the end, Darby Allen came out with a skateboard, blindsided Joe, and nailed him, and, he, and they cleared the ring. So it looks like Darby Allen and Joe are going to be in the program. How do you feel about that? I'm totally cool with that. I think they've they've built up Darby Allen to be like a viable threat to anybody. You know, like if any, like he's getting the the real Rey Mysterio treatment. If you look at, yeah, it. yeah. If you think about it, you know, and they're doing it the right way, where he's like in the land of giants, and he's like this giant killer, or he's just the guy that won't stop. You know, like he's unstoppable. Um, I think Wardlow's gonna come back like completely like. <sighs> Crew cut. Uh, what was his initial gimmick when he joined the company? He was like the man of mayhem or something like that. It's Warlow's world. No, that's yeah, the man of mayhem. I think it was the man of mayhem. It was the man of mayhem, right? Where like you ever see the movie Bronson with um, Tom Hardy? No, I haven't. So they, I've always thought about this. So they bear a. Sh- they bear a resemblance to each other, Tom Hardy and Wardlow, right? Okay. And in the movie Bronson, he's like this, it's based on a real life guy. He's like this criminal who just like gets into fights with everybody, you know, like he's like a man of mayhem. If Wardlow goes back to that initial character and like makes himself like a real badass, I think that would evolve him more, you know? Yeah, I hope they do something positive. He's a big dude, man. You don't get that opportunity yeah. too often, uh, but they have beat him now, you know? Yes. You find you beat him, so... I don't know if that's going to hurt him or help him. I, I like the fact that he was kind of this unbeatable guy with the streak. He kind of resembled the Goldberg booking, but I guess you have yeah. to beat him to kind of get him to start having different types of matches. And this yeah. is how you do it. Joe looks great, though. I'm glad Joe's on TV. Oh, same here. Yeah, I, I think Joe is a good asset to have. Um, the stop and goes have hurt a little bit because, you know, obviously he's been banged up a little bit. and But... uh. 
it, what it, okay thank you he's doing uh, great work he's still yeah, doing great he's work. doing great work sorry I, i'm getting i'm getting guidance from our producer go into this aj injured story right before questions where is this mg i'm working on getting it to you just thank you <laughs> <laughs> he's like do this thing now i yeah. don't have it ready for you You know what he is it. our baba booey he is our Gal gary delabate mg booey I, he is MG Bowie. <laughs> so uh, Rampage tonight, Orange Cassidy defends the All-Atlantic title against Trent. That should be fun. Uh, we hear from Jamie Hayter. Great. Uh, Jade Cargill defends against Kira Hogan. Uh, Swerve faces uh, Wheeler Yuta. Uh, that's going to be a great match. And uh, Moxley's going to cut a promo. Moxley's cutting a promo. Cool. How do, you, how do you feel about Mogul Associates? Um, I like Swerve. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I want him to do great in that company because he's so talented. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see where it goes. I think Parker Parker needs a little bit of a look change. Because yeah. he's walking around like a Frankenstein monster, too. Yeah. They right? Like he's, yep. uh, they're all walking. Like, so AJ Styles suffered an injury at a house show. Here, here's, what, um, here's what MG sent. This is, uh, I think he sent me a cultaholic link here. Two-time uh, two WWE champion suffered an injury at a WWE house show in Hershey, Pennsylvania on Thursday. Styles was teamed with his OC sta stable mates, Carl Anderson and Mia Yim, against Judgment Day, Finn Balor, Damian Priest, and Rhea Ripley at the show. But the match was stopped early after the 45-year-old sustained an injury. I can't believe AJ Styles is 45 freaking years old. Yeah, same here. The injury occurred after Styles hit a spot. Uh, from over the top rope to the outside, the phenomenal one immediately grabbed his lower leg ankle area before the ref did the X and called. Uh, you know, he's been a man that that has benefited from a lack of injuries his whole career. Uh, yeah. Just an unbelievable, uh, the, the, the level of work that this guy does is remarkable. But the fact that he's 45 years old and he's still so freaking good says so much about him. I hope it's not that serious. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I hope he can make it to Japan this week. I don't think he's going. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> I don't think he's going. Uh, so, very interesting. All right, we'll see what happens there. Guys, get your questions in. It's Q&A time, boys and girls. Submit your question to chat room with the hashtag AskMattMen, and we'll do our best to answer your question. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We have, we have the final card here. Let's do this before the questions. Get your questions ready. Mm -hmm. Also, AW Dynamite on the 4th. Match has been announced. Chris Jericho takes on Ricky Starks. This is going to be a big show in Seattle. So, and we're getting the new look. We're getting the new set. It's happening. I'm excited. It looks like it's going to be very lasery. Very lasery. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> like that's how the, the show uh, starts. Those those commercial promos have everybody walking out into like red and blue lasers. Yeah. Also, a lot of questions regarding. WrestleMania. So if you have WrestleMania questions, we'll we'll answer we'll we'll talk about it in this segment here. I also want to talk about uh actually let's go into this before we go into Q and A's, okay? Yeah. A, a major problem with AEW is that they have this unbelievably stacked roster. Guys like Rusev, Andrade, obviously he's not there right now, but Rusev, Andrade, Miro, I should call him. Miro, Andrade, and the list goes on and on of talent that that you'd really don't see on TV week after week. How do you fix that problem? Mm. So what do they do? They have dark, right? They have eight, they have dark, uh, elevation, right? They have dark elevation, and then they have dark, correct? Right. They have rampage. They have dynamite. Mm -hmm. What do you do here? Do you revamp one of those other shows into becoming more like a feature for your top stars to go out there and have these preliminary matches and, you know, kind of look great and strong. And then they build a feud for TV. Do you do the WCW approach? Do you add another hour of Rampage? Do you add another hour of Dynamite? How do you fix this problem? You know, that's that's tricky. That's a tough road to hoe. And I'm going to tell you why. For my In my opinion... When you start talking about extending shows or changing an hour here and doing et cetera, you kind of do fall into that WWE trap of three hour raw, two hour SmackDown, one hour main event, right? Yeah. Or a brand split, which I 
don't think it makes sense on paper. Like an like an AEW brand split makes perfect sense on paper, right? So you have the guys who aren't on Dynamite every week get on another show, right? Well, well, Ring of Honor is going to alleviate some of that. Yeah, but still, I think they're going to have like this really. They have one of the thickest rosters in professional wrestling at this point, right? Yeah, very, very big. Right, huge, huge roster. I don't think an extra hour of dynamite would benefit that, but maybe an how about this? Maybe an extra half an hour of rampage. Well, you got to do an hour. You can't do 30 minutes. You can't do 30 minutes. No, you got to do an hour block. I would do I would split rampage into half and half. I would do rampage ring of honor. So <laughs> they can't do that either. Ugh. Uh yeah. So I'll give you a great Well, actually Actually, they can. They can do that. Right. So we're going to get... Will Washington reported that uh, the next Battle of the Belts will be on a Friday. Follow, it's going to be a live mm -hmm. show. Rampage first, Battle of the Belts second. Back to back. Right? Mm -hmm. To me, this feels like a test. Okay. You know, it's an experiment to see what this could garner. I don't know the answer here. I, I, I think the problem is they have unbelievable talent that they can't highlight every week on their main show. You know, like I had a problem. I'll give you a great example of this. CM Punk, in my opinion, I get why they put him on Rampage for the debut. I don't think it should have been a Rampage debut. Yeah, but they pre-sold those tickets like in a heartbeat, I, I, right? Yeah, I understand why they did it. I, but personally, yeah. I feel like your main show needs to be your main show, right? Like, this is the main show. Rampage, you could do two hours. I think the time slot is really crappy for two hours. Yeah. But if you have a two-hour Rampage, that that kind of fixes some of this because you could run it as, like, another Dynamite and, and have the structure very similar. Uh, I know that it's not it's not similar now because it's one hour and they're trying to play with the time slot where putting they were doing the main event first and then going backwards. Mm -hmm. I get why they were doing that, but I, I think you need some sort of secondary, you know, second television show that's not considered a B product mm -hmm. that you could have, you know, Miro on and you could have Andrade on and you could have all these guys on that you're not getting on TV. Not saying do a brand split. I don't think they're prepared for a brand split because you haven't established these brands yet. But, my God, look at your roster, guys. Huge, huge roster. And, you know, like, I, I want to see how that plays out in 2023. Let's look to the uh, chat and see what they say. Um, Estilo Latino says, no third hour because then the show is too long and they'll try to cram four to five hours of angles into a three-hour show. Just do angles on dark and do something with that crew. Yeah, well, you would have to. You would have to redo dark. You would have to redo that show. Yeah, where it's not. You know, it, I don't watch dark. I, I really don't. I don't yeah. watch elevation. Once in a while, I'll turn it on and I'll if something cool happens. You know, like you know, Kenny Omega wrestled. Okay, cool, awesome. Is that their version of like Livewire? It should be. That's what I'm saying. I think what that show should mm -hmm. become is you set up the angles there. You set up, you know, you do your squash match, you do your exhibition, whatever. It's a highlight of the talent. You yeah. get them over there, and then you set up a program for Dynamite, and now there's, you know, like, it, it, you, you should watch it to understand what's happening. That's how I would see this. And even if you don't watch it, you'll still understand what's going on. I Live, feel like that's... Livewire you know. was the phone call show, wasn't it? Was it? Or was yeah. it like... Uh, Livewire was the was phone it? call what am I thinking of? I'm not thinking of Sunday Night Heat. There was another no. like. <clears throat> you're thinking of you're thinking like an, of yeah, like like any of those Shotgun Saturday Night or whatever. Yeah, you know yeah. what? I went down a Shotgun Saturday Night rabbit hole. Uh, I have to tell you, the original concept for that show is right up my alley. Go into a nightclub in New York City. Velocity is what you're thinking of. Yes, Velocity. Yeah, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Cadillac, Cadillac Carson with the assist here. One assist from Cadillac Carson. The Bulls leading the Knicks, 97 and 98. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. So I would say they need they need to revamp Rampage. That would be my answer here. Yeah. Or you do a Saturday night show. I don't know. I, I, dude, it, it has to do with the TV. I, at the end of the day, it's out of Tony's hands. It has more to do with TV. But right. you do have two properties that's on the internet that you know have a little bit of a cult following. People like it. 
I would watch it if I knew that there was a really cool match happening. If I knew that, let's I'm gonna bring up I'm gonna bring up Miro, right? If there sure. is a Miro versus uh Claudio for the Ring of Honor title. I'm just throwing an example. On yeah. one of those shows, on Dark. You wouldn't want to watch it? I'd want to watch it. Oh, I definitely I definitely want to watch it. You know, <clears throat> here here's another interesting example. You know what I fell hard for? The no commercial um Brian Danielson Minoru Suzuki match on YouTube. Dude, I thought it was so cool, but you know what? It exposed mm -hmm. their ass. I don't think they'll do that again. Why not? Uh, the numbers, I, I don't think the numbers were what they wanted it to be. Mm. I know that it was good. It was like, I think I peaked at almost a hundred thousand, uh, concurrent viewers, but it was like 98,000. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like 98,000. Just, yeah. Just under, okay. but it was a very, it was a great experiment and I'm all for that. I love these experiments that they do. Um, I don't know if it garnered, if it, if it was the numbers that they were looking for. But listen, 100,000 concurrent viewers on, on YouTube is great. But it also, you know what's amazing? It's free, right? The internet is there. YouTube is free. Oh, yeah. You have, I mean, why is it only 100,000? I always wonder that. Is it still difficult for people to figure out, like, how to put it on? Do they not have a YouTube app on their TV? Do they not go to YouTube as much? I, I always... I always find it interesting when you have like a YouTube content creator that's able to get two and a half million views on a video, right? Or or, or live viewers, they're doing a live session, they have a hundred thousand, they're nobody, and nobody as far as mainstream goes, right? But you put mm -hmm. a TV product on YouTube and it and it doesn't go anywhere near their actual television viewership. It fizzles. It's very strange. Very strange. I I, I I'm always fascinated by that. It just shows you that. Digital is not there yet. Digital streaming is still, we're, we're like a good five years away from it becoming a standard. Yeah. Very interesting stuff. All right. Do you want to continue with the chat or do you want to go into like question questions? Well, let's go into question question. All right. So we got a couple of super chats here. Guys, if you want to super chat us, that'd be cool. We'll answer your question right away. We got one here from Shreyer Hashemi. Uh, hello, my sweet potatoes. The over under sociology behind rock versus roman at wrestlemania channeling your inner vince voice ah uh over under and such so there's gonna be a lot of sociology for this match if it happens or maybe it might not happen mm -hmm. wwe has plans uh the answer for ever since i've asked him about Dwayne, it is if Dwayne wants to do it we have it ready they have a plan right this has been going on for a year now i think Dwayne needs it after the whole black adam fiasco The dog is attacking my daughter, and she's screaming. Oh, no. The dog is attacking and eating my purse. <laughs> <laughs> that is what I'm hearing right now. I'm so sorry. Um, he needs I, it. He needs it. Dwayne needs, he needs it. Dwayne, uh, listen, if, if it was ever, if it's going to happen, it's going to happen now. It has to happen now because you can't do another year of like, well, maybe next year. Um, he's not. His schedule is lighter because of the XFL launch. They want yep. synergy between the XFL because this is the demo that they're looking for. 18 to 34, 18 to 48, whatever. Um, sports centric. They're going to need a lot of help. The last version of the XF XFL, we, we never really got to see what they were able to do. I thought the football was much better, but we only got a couple yeah. of weeks and that was it. Uh, you know, this has to work. There's a lot of money into it. And what better way to make it work is if your owner or your front man is wrestling at WrestleMania and he does something really cool. I think that'll bring people over. I know it's at it's near the end of the season, right? The season ends, I think, end of April. So you got a couple of weeks after WrestleMania, but you know, you're in playoff times. You want to you want to pop those numbers and make it look good for TV. And what better way than Dwayne wrestling and getting it out there, you know, having some sort of XFL uh uh incorporation in what he does. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh 100%. It ha Again, it's up to Dwayne. It's not in WWE's hands. They, they have this all laid out. They have the plan. They have a backup mm. plan. Uh, they've kind of... They're, they're, they're booked in a box now because he holds both titles. There is conversations to, to eliminate two titles. There is another conversation to add another title. How are they going to split the titles? There's all these different options. One thing I have not heard is... 
I don't I don't think the option here is going to be Roman wrestling twice. I don't think that's good. I, I think yeah. It, you know, if he wrestles if he wrestles Dwayne night one and then night two Cody and he loses to Cody, you just weakened Cody's title win. He's not the Kingslayer. He came, he beat up a beat up guy that wrestled the night before against one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. So you're 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 kind of weak. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't like that approach. I don't know if they'll do that. I know that there's plans for him at Wrestle uh, at Royal Rumble to show up. This it's very much they they're gonna solidify this within the next week or two. They have. It's to. gonna be interesting to see where they go because of the Cody thing. Cody, they're starting to do the video packages for Cody. You know. So. Yeah, he was on he was on that show. He was on the uh, the best of. Uh, I I I just. There's a lot of moving parts, and it's too early to report anything because there's 5,000 different ideas on how to get to where they want to go. They know where they yeah. want to go, though. They just, how are they going to get there? Yeah, I think that's always the question, too. You know, like, how are we going to get there? But, you know, it's going to be cool to see. I'm sure it's going to be great. You know, like, I'm looking forward to seeing Roman do a big match at WrestleMania, you know? And, like, I feel like I haven't felt that way in a while where I'm like, you know, whatever they do, I'm okay with. Yeah. I... I it's too early. It, it's it, give it like get, give it another week or two because two weeks in they're gonna have to know what they're doing with Rumble. Yeah. Uh. They. I. I mean, there's no question about it. They. They're gonna have to decide what they're doing because Rumble is the beginning and that tells a story. So whether or not you know Cody shows up and he wins at Rumble and now he's the number one contender for the title. Um. I know that they're gonna do Seth and him again. Hmm. Maybe you split the title. Maybe you do something at elimination. Cha- I, I, there's so many different options here for them. I don't want to see them split the title. <laughs> I think they kind of have to. You know, they kind of yeah. have to here, uh, unless you're going to have a champion on both shows every week or every other week. Which I would like to see. Yeah. You know, Roman's well, wrestled we, we what, eleven times. That. This he he he's barely wrestled on TV. But he's been on TV. He's been on TV. By the way, tonight is the big the big match. John Very Cena. Exciting. John Cena and Kevin Owens versus Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. And this is probably going to begin something between Sami and Roman. It's already started, but this is going to kind of continue this. And it'll lead to a match maybe at um, Elimination Chamber. Cool stuff here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I do think we're going to get Usos versus KO and Sami at WrestleMania, though. What are you going to get? Usos versus Sami and KO. At WrestleMania for the titles? Yeah. Love that. I'm yeah. into that. Big time. Uh, this is another one from Schreyer. When will we ever see Andrew's Dapplegang or John Alba on a live stream on Mad Men talking about hair care? Oh, you know what? We should do that. John could do that. Yeah. Maybe maybe on, in April. Maybe maybe in the first day of April we could do that. Are you guys allowed to talk to each other? No. We don't. The universe <laughs> collapses. You know what we do? We uh, do the mirror. We do mirror boy. We do this. We do a MyMac with each other. That's funny. Uh, from our buddy Batcher 3000. Ask Ashante. Oh. Now, that, now that dream killed your gimmick, how will Treehouse Vince repackage you? You know what? Tweet Treehouse Vince and ask him. You'll get the dirtiest answer you could ever freaking imagine. That would be very dirty. Very dirty. But regardless of what happens, you still have to pass out. <laughs> can I? Can I? I mean, what a what a what a great gimmick that turned into. Oh, the best. Yeah, great guy, great guy too. Here's another super from Schreyer. Uh, could you move Rampage to the old Georgia Championship Wrestling time on TBS Saturdays at six o five p.m. Eastern? I, I think we romanticize that time slot astronomically in the world of pro wrestling, but I don't know if that's a great time slot. Yeah, I, I look at the numbers and what what's on there and what they do. But listen, you know, it depends on what TBS d- wants. And right now, you're not going to get a lot of this is hardball. You know, they they they're in a contract year and everything gets shitty now. Everybody becomes a little bit of a dick mm-hmm. when you're dealing. You know, when you're talking about millions of dollars, uh, Warner's in a slashing fit, but. AEW's benefit is that they get a million viewers, million or so, you know, give or take, uh, weekly of not DVR proof content. It is, mm-hmm. it is, it is fast forward prevent it. Uh, it's prevent, it's preventing you from fast forwarding because it's live content, and, and that's how people consume 
wrestling and sports. So that is where they benefit from. And that's something that you really don't have with any other pr program, especially with wrestling. So I don't know what the value in a 605 time slot is. I know that AEW would love to get another show uh, for Ring of Honor, at least. But we're going to find out in a, in a, you know, in a couple of months. I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Does Kenny Omega on January 4th at Wrestle Kingdom, does Kenny Omega beat Will Ospreay and then take that belt to the January 4th episode of Dynamite? Say that again. I'm so sorry. Does Kenny beat Will Ospreay on January 4th at the Tokyo Dome? Oh, and bring the, bring the U.S. title? And then bring the U.S. title the same day to Dynamite. Can't do it the same day. Can't do it. Impossible. Can't do it. Can't hop no. on a plane. No. And then I don't think it would be possible. I think it would be way too crazy, too much. If they did that, I would be stunned. I think that would be pretty cool. Like imagine, that would be pretty like, cool if they could do that. But they show him just leave right after and hop on a plane. See you guys later. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know the uh how they could pull that off. But that would well, be where is cool. dynamite next week? Seattle. Yeah, they could do it. I mean they well, let's see. Um, the show ends at around... Well, actually, they probably could. Right? Because it would be... Uh, they do it... It's a 14-hour difference between East Coast and Japan. Time. Time. They could yeah. probably pull it off, but it would be tight. He would Very get there tight. just before. And he wouldn't... He would probably not sleep, so... There's yeah. that whole thing. <laughs> well, flight time flight time from Tokyo to Seattle is nine hours. Is there a direct? That's I just looked it up. Yes. Direct flight from Tokyo to Seattle is nine hours. Okay. So it, I think it could happen. I think that's gonna happen. It would be really rad. Yeah, uh, that could happen. Uh let's jump back into the super chats. Uh Cadillac Carson, five bucks. Happy New Year. Feel Happy better New soon, Year. Rich. Thank you. Is Goldberg a free agent? If so, does he show up in WWE again, or does he go to AEW to confront Wardlow? Uh, I think he would show up in, in WWE again. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think he, I think you would. You, he would go to WWE. I don't. I don't know what he he would want to do in AEW. I don't know if they would want him in AEW or or the price. You know, he's very expensive, and for what a one off. Yeah, exactly. You know? They'll probably save him for like another Saudi show. Yeah, uh, you know WWE. Ha he's already established there, and I think he rehabbed yeah. his image in that company tremendously. So uh, he's a he's a commodity for them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is from Pratik. When is Brock Lesnar and Edge coming back to WWE? Uh, Edge soon. Brock, I would imagine soon as well. They want him for Mania. I think the Bobby Lashley stuff is not settled. So, you know, you're building a WrestleMania card. I would expect the next month or two, you would want to have both of them back. Uh, let's see here. Hashtag ask Matt Men from BC Knight on Twitch. Who will be the next big indie international talent to sign with WWE? Unsigned right now? Unsigned yeah. with like AEW and or you know Ring of Honor New Japan. Yeah, let's um, go that way. I'm very high on Mike Bailey. Speedball Mike Bailey. Yeah, I'm very high on him. Okay. I'm saying I'm that... I'm giving a name that maybe maybe some people aren't too aware of, right? Like someone coming up. I'm very yeah. high on Mike Bailey. I brought him up a couple times the last couple of weeks. So uh, he just signed with Impact, which I think is good for him. But. Ooh. I don't know who else. What MG, about, who do you have? What about your what about your boy Kobe Carino? Ah, Kobe, yeah. There I you think go. Kobe. You know what? Mm. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with Kobe. I think Kobe going to NXT is a is a good move. I think Kobe has done tremendous stuff the last two years. This guy has really put in the work. And, and you know, Steve Carino's kid, wrestlers for Catalyst Wrestling. Great uh, move. A, a total professional. Uh I've interviewed him a couple times. Uh, always just a total great guy. Um, I think Kobe Carino could be a big name uh, for them to sign and do something with cool in NXT. All right, let's see what else we have here. 
This is from Shrikanth. Considering Regal and Joe came into AEW in the same month, do you have information on Joe's contract status? I don't. I don't have information on his contract status. Um, I don't think he, Joe's going to go back to WWE in a in a full time capacity if he ever did go back. Because remember, he was banged up. He mm. weren't really doing much with him. Yeah. So and they cut him. I, I think Joe's having fun doing what he's doing. You know. Yeah, he's wrestling. He hasn't yeah. wrestled for a while. You know, like took him sidelines in uh, WWE, and I yeah. think now he's do he's doing great work. Yeah, I, I like Joe in AEW. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Or Ring of Honor. You know, I think he's a benefit, and I think he's a benefit for the young talent. Oh, for sure. Uh, I think he's definitely teaching Wardlow how to be like a big tough guy. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what his contract status is. I could find out though. Uh, this is from uh, Crown Wolf. Who goes into the Hall of Fame in the new year? Ah, uh, so it's in L.A. What's a big L.A. act that's not in the Hall of Fame? You got to think about that. Two, I, I had heard Sid last year, like he was on that list and they cut him. I don't know why. Maybe they, they chose somebody else or maybe they, they had too many people. But I think yeah. Sid going in the Hall of Fame is a, is, is a name that you would want to put in. Who's not in there? You know, who, who isn't in there that should be in there right now? Christian? Uh, I don't Christian? think so. I, I think it's too early for him. Yeah. Is Patterson well, in the in Hall there. of Fame? I think Patterson's in the Hall of Fame, right? Pat Patterson? Yeah, Pat Patterson. Yeah. Yeah, I think he's in there. Uh, I listen Jericho at some point. I don't know about this year, Batista. but definitely. Oh, Batista. Oh, How yeah. about Dwayne? How about this becomes a year for Dwayne? Isn't he already in the Hall of Fame? No. Really? Yeah. Huh. Hollywood, baby. You know, you want a big Hollywood act? You could do Batista, you could do Dwayne. I I I'll fi I'll find out generally i get it like next next month i get the list uh yeah i think they're, they're probably gonna do you would hope that they pull the trigger on china she's in with dx though right as part of the crew or like separate i don't remember see like that stuff because like i feel like the last couple of years has been a blur with the hall of me fame me too i know me i too. used to be like really on point with that you know me too yeah i don't know I i'll look into it that's a good question Cranwell, fantastic question yeah great 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 question um and plus you have to do like the posthumous induction uh last year it was undertaker vader queen charmel the steiners and shad gaspard with the warrior award okay uh future class apparently it's individual uh individual the only name is uh batista okay so you know it's bound what to else? happen what else do we have we'll do some rapid fires because i gotta get out of here yeah okay what's the presentation gonna look like for aw dynamite on january 4th it's gonna look different <laughs> lasers. lasers lasers everywhere dude Lazes everywhere, new set, uh, a little, the presentation shifting. Yeah. And I do think uh, Kenny's going to show up with that belt. All right, let's see. Tony, Tony Khan you know has a private I'll jet. buy you lunch. I'll buy you lunch if that happens. Tony Khan has a private jet. Makes sense. That would be really I don't cool think you could do, shit. Can you do private to international to Japan? No, it's not long. No, man, you can't. You can't take that private jet there. Yeah. Right. Not enough fuel. You need a bigger plane. You re If you're a millionaire... You refuel in midair. In midair? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is from Ballard Club Guy. Good morning, boys. With the report from Dave Meltzer saying that Triple H has decided on a backup plan for Roman at Mania with the Rock not currently locked in. Uh, if Cody and Seth is the Mania match. Where did, where did it go? If Cody and Seth is the Mania match, who would you yeah. book against Roman? I mean, the only... I, I mean, I could see... I'm not saying this is going to happen, but maybe like a double elimination. And now they night one, they wrestle to, to challenge on night mm -hmm. two. You could do that or elimination chamber. I don't know because they don't know or, or not. Not enough people know what the plan is. I think it's all up in the air. But, you know, there's like four different ideas here or five, you yeah. know, multiple ideas. I'm not giving a number, but multiple ideas here in the air. Uh, I'm sure Hunter knows what he wants to do. I'm sure he's related to the right people. You know oh, what sure. his plan is here, but you got to make this work. You got to make this work. You can't make it fail. And I'm hoping they make it work. Would you rather 
if you're thinking about it in that regard, let's say Rock versus Roman is a lock, right? Would you rather Roman lose at Elimination Chamber and Cody win at Mania and have the other, the extra main event be uh, Rock versus Roman, like beltless? You could do it beltless for sure. Uh, yeah. You could have Cody. Yeah, you could do something where the title comes off of him and now he's beltless. Uh, that would, I mean, the best, the simplest thing would have been, or, or the most traditional way would have been, he loses the title somewhere. And he goes into the feud with, with you know, Dwayne. Uh, I keep calling him Dwayne and it's pissing people off. The Rock. Uh, you, could have, you could have it without the title and that makes the most sense. And it doesn't really matter at that point, right? Because it's a spectacle. It's a specialty match. But if he's going in there with the title, you kind of, you're kind of booked into a box. Well, it keeps, you know, if Roman loses that elimination chamber, it'll keep him strong because he doesn't have to take the pin to lose the belt, right? Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have to take it. So right. that's that's your right that's your way to write around it, you know. Yeah. Let's do like three more. All right. Or two more and I, I got to get out. Do we have oh, this is from BC Knight. Okay. Uh if Punk doesn't return to AEW or WWE, where should he go? Start his own promotion? No, probably not. He doesn't he doesn't go anywhere. Maybe he does a one off in Japan. I don't know, but I don't think he, if if he doesn't if he doesn't go to EW, WWE, there's nowhere else. Where the hell are you going to go? He's not going to Impact. Yeah, dude. Like I, it, again, it depends on the guy. He could call UFC for all he cares. You know, like it. He's his own unique sort of guy. You know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Here's from Shrikanth. Do you expect Roman's reign across one thousand days? What are they at right now? Uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure. MG, what, MG like, what's a uh, one thousand? Yeah, he it? would have to. He would have to go to SummerSlam, I believe. To oh wow, cross I over. don't. I don't see be, that happening. Yeah, he's gonna. He's gonna be like at nine hundred at Mania. I looked it up a while ago. He's yeah. yeah so, I don't. I don't. I don't see that happening. I, I mean, I'd be shocked if it, if he does hold the title that long. Yeah, same here. I think this yeah. is the year to like not not dissolve the bloodline stuff, but like I think it's ran its course. It's starting to get to the end of that whole thing, right? Yeah. Uh, this is from Cadillac. Rich and Andrew, will either of you be entering the Royal Rumble? I am, yeah. I'm entering. I'm entering the Rumble this year, guys. Just he, he, That's... I was I'm going to do, uh, do the Bushwhacker spot. I'm just going to go in and get thrown right out. That number two, Andrew's area. Can you imagine? That's sad. it. That company's going to hell if that's the case. It's over. Uh, do you see The Undertaker at the Raw 30th anniversary show? The Undertaker? Yeah, why not? I would imagine you want him. It's a big, it's like a big Attitude Era retro Raw, so... For sure. You know, you'd want to have him there. Here's a comment from Tim B. Not true, Andrew. There are plenty of private jets with the range. TK literally takes his jet across the Atlantic regularly. Yeah, but going to going to going to England is a little bit easier than going to Japan. It's a much shorter flight. So going to England is like six hours, seven hours. You're adding another two. I don't know if his. I guess he could. I, listen, he could. He could charter a plane. You know, he could charter a jet to do it. It's possible. Uh, this is from Wild One Grim Reaper. Is Kane in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, he was class of twenty twenty one, I believe. Was he? I think so. Yeah. Class of 2021 was a big one. Because you you're like I, I got it right in front of me right now. You had Kane, Molly Holly, Eric Bischoff, Great Kali, Rob Van Dam, Ozzy, Ozzy Osbourne, uh, Dick the Bruiser, uh, Pistol Pez Watley, Bud Sawyer, Ethel Johnson, and Paul Bosch. All right, cool. Well, let's see what we got here. Uh, I think that might be it. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, cool. Guys, we have a lot more content coming up the next couple days, so join us. Um, I don't know what the schedule is going to be for the releases, but we're going to figure it out. So tomorrow we have a whole bunch of recordings we're going to do. We're not doing. Are we doing them live or no? No, right? Do you want to do tomorrow to you. live or just record it? Uh, I don't know. Let's figure it out. All Let's right, see cool. how you feel. Sure, yeah, we'll figure it out. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Last show of the year. Love each and every one of you. I'll see you in 2023. Goodbye. Love you guys.